Western civilization was primarily built on two foundations, the Judeo-Christian religious tradition of theism and revelation, and the Greek influence of rational investigation and artistic creativity. The Greeks were people who took pride in humanity and its achievements. Many pursued wisdom strictly through philosophy and science. The Jews and Christians, however, viewed philosophy and science through the lens of divine revelation. They looked to the scriptures to guide them in how they should view the world as well as how they should live and treat others. During the 1500 years following Christ's life on earth, Christianity spread, becoming the dominant religion in Western civilization. During this time, atheism and religious skepticism were rare. In the 17th and 18th centuries, during the time known as the Age of Enlightenment, there was a great increase in two major philosophies, rationalism and empiricism. Rationalism is the belief that all claims of truth should be judged solely by human reason, without any appeal to divine revelation. Empiricism is the belief that knowledge is gained primarily through human experience, through the five senses, touching, tasting, hearing, smelling, and seeing. This view is sometimes called scientism. Rationalism and empiricism seek knowledge by first rejecting the reality of divine revelation. It was also during this time that modern science was born, largely due to the biblical worldview. The biblical worldview has always held that the universe was created by a rational and orderly creator, and thus could be understood through scientific investigation. However, as scientific investigation continued to uncover the mysteries of the universe, some people began to believe that divine revelation from God was impractical or even impossible. Scientists and philosophers began to challenge the scriptures. The church, mistakenly thinking that some claims were at odds with biblical revelation, overreacted in its attempt to protect the authority of the scriptures. To the world, it seemed to imply that faith could not withstand rational scrutiny or scientific investigation. It took some time to distinguish between legitimate discoveries and faulty speculations, and to reconcile the valid scientific discoveries with biblical truths. The new scientific discoveries of the 17th and 18th centuries led many people to a sense of great self-confidence. Religious beliefs began to lose importance in many people's lives. They began to think that all of life's mysteries could, and eventually would, be solved by science and the human intellect. Christianity was openly attacked and often disregarded as simply unimportant. Some intellectuals equated Christianity with superstition and ignorance. Many of these intellectuals called themselves theists, but their God didn't reveal himself or intervene in the world through miracles. They were, in fact, deists. Men such as Sir Isaac Newton and Thomas Jefferson placed their confidence in the powers of the human intellect and downplayed the truthfulness and authority of the Bible. Another proponent of such a view was Voltaire, one of the most influential intellectuals to make a full-scale attack on Christianity. He was not an atheist, but he believed that God did not intrude in the affairs of the world. Voltaire thought that the Bible was a particularly evil influence on society. He proclaimed, This is what fools have written, what imbeciles comment, what rogues teach, and what young children are made to learn by heart. And the scholar who is filled with indignation and who is irritated by the most abominable absurdities that have ever disgraced human nature is called blasphemer. It was fashionable to scoff at organized religion. Religious symbols were sometimes outlawed and the church was harassed. Christianity's influence was diminishing. The secularist ideas of the Enlightenment took root within the spheres of higher education and continued to grow in spite of the widespread religious revivals that occurred under such preachers as John Wesley, George Whitfield, and Jonathan Edwards. In 1859, Charles Darwin published The Origin of Species. His theory of evolution shook the world and offered a foundation for worldviews without God. The ideas of Karl Marx, Friedrich Nietzsche, and Sigmund Freud also encouraged atheism. When combined with Darwin's theory, human experience could be explained solely through economic necessity, biological evolution, and sexual urges. 
By the end of the 19th century, the major components of secular humanism were well formed and common, both in Europe and America. As these ideas spread, Christians often retreated from the cultural centers of society, opening the door to secular humanist thought. Humanist ideas moved freely into all areas of life. They became entrenched as the dominant worldview in American society. Christians had virtually abandoned these areas, mistakenly separating their religious lives from their secular lives. In 1933, the first Humanist Manifesto was published. The manifesto made it explicitly clear that God has no place in the secular humanist worldview, though humanism was still considered to be religious in nature. In 1973, Paul Kurtz, editor of Free Inquiry and one of today's leading secular humanists, drafted the Humanist Manifesto II. It proclaims, no deity will save us, we must save ourselves. Many influential thinkers and educators signed these manifestos. John Dewey, Charles Francis Potter, Isaac Asimov, Corliss Lamont, B.F. Skinner, Julian Huxley, and Betty Friedan, among others. Many eminent scholars, educators, and other influential people have also been nominated as Humanists of the Year by the American Humanist Association. Individuals such as well-known authors and scientists Linus Pauling, Carl Sagan, and Isaac Asimov. Famed psychologists and psychotherapists Carl Rogers, Eric Fromm, B.F. Skinner, and Abraham Maslow. Many influential feminists were also nominated, such as Mary Calderon, Betty Friedan, and Margaret Sanger. Ted Turner, the media mogul and founder of CNN, was nominated as well. Secular humanists have influenced every area of society and education. A shift has occurred in the way much of America thinks. Humanistic ideologies dominate most cultural and professional arenas, such as education, literature, the government, law, and the media. In order to turn back the floodwaters of secularist ideologies, it is essential to understand the secular humanistic worldview.